Coming up on Mackie Tech, I'll show you a quick and easy way to stream your favorite movies and TV shows using Jellyfin and MB on Windows. So we kicked off this media server series with Plex, and now we're going to dive into the other alternatives all in one final video. I originally planned to split this into two parts, but realized it made more sense to cover everything in one clean episode. And at the end, we'll compare and contrast the three, Plex, MB, and Jellyfin, and see which one is right for you. If you want a deeper dive into media server fundamentals or hardware decoding, check out my Plex video. I'll leave a link in the video description, and I will also link it at the end of this video. So strap in. Okay, so here we are on the Jellyfin site. I figured we start out with this. We'll go over to download now. And since we want Windows, we'll go ahead and click on Windows and then click on Downloads. And then we want the AMD 6.4. And then we'll go to Windows X64 EXE. So we'll click on that. And then we will save that to our desktop and let that download. We'll minimize this and we'll double click on our Jellyfin setup. Click on Next. I agree. And then we do want a basic setup, uh, which is uh, what they recommend. There is an advanced setup. If you want, I can do a video on that, but we'll do basic for now. Click on next. And it does tell us to not click any folders that have other data or media, which is fine. We don't intend to so click on next. And then we'll click on next if this install path looks good. And we'll click on install. Okay, it's completed. I'll click on close. And now we have an icon on our desktop for the actual server. So we'll double click on this and we're going to say allow. And sometimes it does this. It's running, but it kind of hides in the background. So I'm going to click on my little toolbar down here. And here it is right here. So I'm going to open it up. And oop, that's not the browser we want. Okay, so we'll put it on this window. I'm not sure why it does that, but sometimes it, it starts and then it hides on your toolbar. So make sure you you can't see it open. Click on this little toolbar down here and it should be in your little list down here. Okay, so welcome to Jellyfin. Make sure that your preferred language is displayed here. We're going to choose English. Click on Next. And then we're going to set up a username and password. Click on Next. And then it's going to ask us to add our media library. Now, one thing you want to note that may or may not be interesting is that if you look in the web bar, it says localhost 86. And that means that it's on this computer. So we're not on Jellyfin's site. We're on this computer, but it's accessing Jellyfin through this localhost. So we'll click on add media library, and then we'll click on content type. We'll select the drop down, and we'll go to movies. And obviously there's a lot more you can choose from TV shows, uh, home videos, home music, whatnot. We're gonna stick with movies for right now. We can change the display name if we choose. We're going to leave that at movies. And then before we add the media, I do want to kind of run through this real quick. So we want to make sure that we enable the library, have that checked. Uh, we have a preferred download language. We're going to change that to English and then country region, United States. And you can select if you want to have the titles over the file names, just a preference if you want. We do want enable real-time monitoring. It'll keep tabs on the folders that we're using for our media and update them accordingly as we add content. And then it has an option, which is kind of cool. Like if you have the Star Wars series or the Rocky series and you add more videos or movies to that series and they're the same series, they'll add them to a what they call a collection, which is kind of nice. And then the metadata is the movie database, the open database, that's fine. Um, everything else is sort of, I leave this as default, um, except for automatically refresh metadata. I'm going to go every three days. And then this is other stuff for uh, images, for whatnot, if you want to have different images for posters. Uh, everything else here, we're just going to leave uh, as it is. Click on OK. Oh, it wants us to add the movie folder. Huh. Oops. So we'll go back up and click on the plus sign to add our folder. Now, as we do this, what we'll do here is we're gonna take a quick jump back and we're gonna open up our file folder and we're gonna to navigate to where Jellyfin is installed. And it's under program files. And if you go down to Jellyfin like this, and you don't have to do it this way, this is just the way I'm doing it. But I like to keep everything under kind of one area. So I'm under the Jellyfin folder right now and I'm gonna create a folder called Movies. I mean, it's going to say, yeah, if I want permission, I'm going to say, yeah, but you can put this on your desktop. You can put it in your documents folder. It doesn't really matter. I just have to keep everything consistent if I can. And then you can create another one for TV shows and whatnot. Under the folder, we're going to go to the C drive and we'll go to all the way down to program files, Jellyfin, and then movies. Right, now I'll click on OK. 
All right, so now we're going to go back to our folders, our file folders, and we happen to have a movie that is sitting on a folder on our desktop. And let's see, uh, here we are, a few good men, so we'll copy that. And we'll go back to our C drive, program files, Jellyfin, movies, and we'll paste that over there. Now we'll click on next and preferred metadata language English United States. That's fine. Allow remote connections to the server. I'm going to say no, but you can if you want to. It is actually free with Jellyfin and Jellyfin is also free if you want to do hardware encoding. And we'll talk about that at the end of the video. So now we're done. Okay, now we'll sign in and here's our movie. Few good men. And while we're here, we can click on this little three button option here and use uh, identify. And identify is analogous to Plex's match, where you can type in a different name of the movie, a different year. You can use the IMDB ID, and it'll update the metadata. It'll make sure that it matches correctly. Other things I can do is I can edit the image if I want a different wallpaper. Um, I can add it to a playlist. I can add it to a collection. So pretty similar stuff to what we saw with Plex. Now, Plex is pretty cool. The only challenge I've been running into with Plex is that it doesn't have as many third-party client apps. So, in other words, if we're trying to watch it on our smart TV or on our smartphone, uh, it doesn't have as much support. Um, I did find an iOS app and it works fine, but as an example, on my Apple TV, I, I wasn't able to find a, a first-party app. I found a third-party app that I have yet to monkey with, but it doesn't have as much support. So now let's go ahead and jump over to MB. So for MB, we're gonna go to mb.media and enter. We have a couple different options. We have about, blog, download, MB Premiere, which we'll talk about. We'll click on download. And these are all the available ways you can use MB servers. So there's a lot of support here. We're gonna click on Windows right here and we'll click on download MB server. We'll save that to our desktop along with the other ones we have sitting there. And that is ready to go. And we'll say run and installing MB server. And it's asking us for our preferred display language. So we'll go down to English, click on next, and we'll set up our username and password on next. And as before, we'll set up the library in just a sec, click on next, configure remote access. I'm gonna say no, click on next. And then I accept the terms of use and next. And you can also assign other users to this if you want. We'll put in our password. And to get our libraries going, we'll go to the upper right hand corner and click on this little wheel here. And we'll go down to library and click on new library. We'll select contact type movies, display name movies is fine. This is very, very similar to Jellyfin. Preferred download language for Meta, English, certification country, United States, image download language, we'll say English. And we're also gonna select our metadata downloaders, the movie database, the open movie database, the TV database, that's all fine. We'll do the same thing with collections if we're in a series of movies. That's about all I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna leave the rest as default and click on okay. As before, we made a movie folder for our MB location. And here's our movie that we'll drag into the movies folder. And then we'll go back to our MB location. So we put our MB folder in there, close that out and go back to home. And there's our movie. As before, we have our little three button option and we can edit the data. We can add to a playlist. We can add to a collection. We can refresh the metadata and we can identify as we saw before under Jellyfin and Plex. So there's a lot of similarities between the two. So now that you've seen Plex, Jellyfin and MB installations, uh, let's take it offline and talk about which one might be best for you. So which one should you use? Plex, MB, or Jellyfin? Well, here's the short version. Plex gives you the most polished experience. It's easy to set up, works across tons of devices, and has the best remote access support. But if you want features like hardware decoding or remote access for that matter, or offline sync, you'll need a Plex Pass subscription. MB sits right in the middle. It gives you more privacy and control than Plex, and it's still pretty easy to use, but some of the best features like DVR and remote access, as well as hardware decoding, still require a paid MB Premier license. Jellyfin, lastly, is completely free and open source. You get free control, no payments, and no data is sent to any outside servers. But you'll trade that for a slightly more complex setup and fewer official apps, especially on smart TVs and mobile. Let us know in the comments which one you're using or if you're maybe using something else for your media streaming. 
If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like this, please make sure that you like and subscribe to Mackie Tech and ring that sub notification bell so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. If you happen to be working on a NAS or Raspberry Pi project or other tech projects like this and need a hand, consider checking out my Patreon. You'll get access to extra tips and direct support. Links are in the description. Lastly, make sure to check out my Plex video here. And thank you again for watching. We'll be talking to you again very soon.